स्टेट गवर्नमेंट के मैकेनिकल के लिए उनकी तैयारी कर रहा हूँ और लेकिन मैकेनिकल के तो वैसे वैकेंसी निकला बहुत कम हो चुका है कई सारे डिपार्टमेंट कम बहुत बिल्कुल खत्म ही कर दी वैकेंसी लेकिन फिर भी एक उम्मीद है पांडेस चाय इस पॉपुलर अमंग लोकल्स एंड टूरिस्ट लाइक कुछ ना कुछ तो करना ही है अच्छा कर रखा है उन्हें यहाँ पे चाय की दुकान खोल दिया और बहुत बढ़िया चाय अच्छी लगी टेस्ट बहुत बेरोजगारी बहुत है सर आजकल इसलिए भैया ने अपने खोल लगा छोटा मोटा काम ये बहुत अच्छा चल रहा है अपन का रेगुलर लगाते हैं सर सुबह चार से नौ बजे तक लगाते हैं पंकज पांडे ओपन सिस्टी स्टॉल एवरी इवनिंग फॉर टू आवर्स योर रिपोर्ट इंडिया टुडे an engineer chaiwala this is a wonderful country where you'll get all kinds of people okay our two images of the day one comes from riyadh in saudi arabia where bollywood mega star amitabh bachchan making news as he met football legends cristiano ronaldo lionel messi and kylian mbappe inaugurating the much anticipated football match between messi's paris saint germain and cristiano ronaldo's saudi team as i said uh, amitabh bachchan there the center of attraction in riyadh he is a global star Our second image of the day is from India's new Parliament building. The centre has released images from inside the new under construction Parliament building. It features larger halls, a modern library, redeveloped offices, and committee rooms. The second part of the budget session is expected to take place in this new building later in March, April. Okay, those are our two images of the day. Uh, for now, you stay well, stay safe. Good night, Shubhratri, Jai Hind, Namaskar. Have a safe weekend. Bye for now. nominations 2023 were announced on January 19th evening while RRR is out of the race after making it to the long list all that breeds brought in some good news as it became the only entry from India in the documentary category German film has backed Maximum Knots whereas Steven Spielberg who had backed best director award at the Golden Globes 2023 is also surprisingly out of the race for the best film trophy the ceremony is now on 19th February in London here are all the details kind of weird Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Very... The BAFTA nominations are out, and the final nominees were revealed by Haley Atwood and Ted Lasso actor Tohib Jimmo during a live press conference on January 19th. Honors revealed this year's nominees from BAFTA's home here in London. In the best film non-English language category, Estrada Molly's Magnum Opus was outshined by All Quiet on the Western Front, Argentina 1985, Corsage, Decision to Leave, and The Quiet Girl. Good news however poured in as all that breeds turned out to be the only entry from India that too in the documentary category. The film has been directed by Shonak Sen and the storyline revolves around two brothers raised to save a bird of prey essential to New Delhi's ecosystem during a time of unrest. Kyun kar rahe hai? Pata nahi koi koi reason to diya nahi unhone. Bhai kab tak kam chalenge? Jaise chalate aa rahe the itne saalon se itne aur chala lo. Now all that breeds will have a face off with all the beauty and the bloodshed fire of love monage daydream navalny interestingly edward berger's german historic drama all quiet on the western front topped the nominations list with as many as 14 nods closely the film has equaled a record previously held by ang lee's 2001 film crouching tiger hidden dragon with 14 nods each four films are the two international films to have received the most nominations in bafta history The banish of initiating. And if you don't stop bothering me, I have a set of shears at home. And each time you bother me from this day on, I'll take those shears and I'll take one of my fingers off with them, and I'll give that finger to you until I have no fingers left. And everything, everywhere, all at once. Look. On the other hand, are leading with ten knots each. What's happening? Austin Butler has been nominated in the Best Actor nomination for his role in Elvis, while the film has received nine nominations. Fly, come on. Ready to fly. Austin will be competing with Colin Farrell for his role in The Banish of Inisherin, Brendan Fraser for The Whale, Daryl McCormick for Good Luck to You, Leo Grant, Paul Mescal for After Sun, and Bill Nye for his role in Living. 
Dot Film Star has become the fifth highest film with maximum nominations after it bagged five nods in its name. Thank you for joining us, Maestro. Thank you. How's the writing going? Not so well. Making it to the list of leading actresses are Kate Blanchett for her role in Tar, Viola Davis for The Woman King, Daniel Deadweiler for Till, Anna De Armas for Blonde. Good luck to you, Leo Cranstar, Emma Thompson, and Golden Globes winner Michelle Yeoh for her role in Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Steven Spielberg, who had backed Best Director award at the Golden Globes 2023, is also surprisingly out of the race for the Best Film Trophy. The prestigious award night will be held in London on 19th February and will be presented by Richard E. Grant and Alison Hammond. Absolutely blow my mind. That's impossible. Entertainment Bureau, India Today. That wouldn't be a sin, though, would it, Fanny? It's time to check out what is keeping our celebrities busy. Here's our popular segment, What's Trending. Karan Johar took to social media to share these adorable pictures of his latest moments with his children. He posed with Yash and Ruhi while cuddling them in his lap. Along with these monochrome photos, he even penned a long note. He wrote and we quote, Being a parent is not an emotion, it's an explosion of every emotion you may have experienced. Words are not the best way to describe the feeling of being a parent. If only cuddles had a language of their own, thank you for shooting these precious images. His friends from the industry, including Kiara Adwani, Abhishek Bachchan and Neetu Kapoor, among others, were quick to shower their love. On work front, Karan Johar is busy working on his upcoming directorial, Rocky or Rani Ki Prem Kahani, starring Ranveer Singh, Alia Bhatt, Shabana Azmi, Dharmendra and Jaya Bachchan. You know what he signed up for? Gear up for Alia Bhatt's Hollywood debut as streaming giant Netflix has announced August 11th as the release date of her film Heart of Stone. The makers also shared the first glimpse of her character along with her co-star Jamie Donnan. Heart of Stone is going to be extremely epic. It's a super grounded, raw action thriller. It has... For the unverse Heart of Stone, we'll see Alia performing a few stunts and interestingly, she was also a few months pregnant when she was shooting for this film. Heart of Stone also features Gal Gadot. We really wanted to make sure we keep it realistic so people can feel the pain. Rachel Stone lives off the adrenaline she's addicted with. Stone? Stone! Sara Ali Khan has reportedly quit management agency The Collective after five long years. According to reports, Sara and the agency board decided to part ways amicably for better future projects. The buzz is Sara has now joined Karan Johar and Panti Sachte led Dharma Cornerstone Agency and they will now exclusively manage films, web series, and brands for her. On work front, Sara Ali Khan has begun prepping for her upcoming project titled Metro Indino, which is being directed by Anurag Basu. The film will see Sara sharing screen space with Aditya Roy Kapoor for the first time. The actress has also finished shooting for Air Vatan, Mere Vatan. Sara Ali Khan will even be sharing screen space with Vicky Kaushal in Lakshman Oteka directorial. For the unverse, she was last seen in Atran alongside Dhanush and Akshay Kumar. Like Ravan, he wants me to go behind. Well, that's all we could pack in our show today. Keep watching In The Club from Monday to Friday at 2.30pm and 11.30pm only on India Today to get your daily dose of entertainment. This is me, the Pali Patel, signing off. Till next time, thanks for watching and goodbye. Make your media plans smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjdag.com. Make your media plans smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjdag.com. Hello and welcome. Uh, I hope all of you are having a good time at the World Economic Forum in Davos. Uh, we are here to talk about South Asia and whether the governments, the countries, the people of South Asia can come together to find ways of building a common prosperity. We see it often in Europe, we see it in other parts of the world, but in South Asia, so far, there hasn't been as much cooperation as they ideally should be. So what holds us back 
Is there a way forward which navigates past the various differences our countries have? Talk about this. We're joined at the World Economic Forum for this very special conversation by the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs in Pakistan, Hina Rabani Khar. With us also is one of India's most respected spiritual gurus, head of the Art of Living Foundation, Shri Shri Ravi Shankar. And I want to introduce Krishan Balin, the chairperson of John Keel's group. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I want to start by asking the Minister, mm -hmm. if at all you believe it is possible for the governments of South Asia to come together and find ways of achieving a shared prosperity. If not, what do you think, ma'am, holds us back? Okay, thank you, Rahul. And I did warn you that you'd like your session to be a happier session and shouldn't start with me. <laughs> and you still did not take the warning. Nevertheless, look, uh, it's been 20 years I've been in politics. Uh, it's been more than 10 years. I've been holding, you know, close to my heart this file and any regional file, you know, while in office and then outside of the office also because once you are interested in this. And allow me to say that I started working on this file of regional integration, cooperation, as an exceptionally optimistic person, because I believe that my generation, a generation which was born post-wars in the subcontinent, has to have it differently. And when I arrived in India as Foreign Minister of Pakistan, I remember I said that we need to get into a process which is unbreakable, which is, which, which is unstoppable, and that we have learned our lessons from history, and any sane person or countries would never want to walk back. Now, unfortunately, in 2010, we were, looking, we were sitting at a far better place than we are in 2022 and 23. And 2000, 2000, perhaps, we were sitting at a better place in 2010, 1990. So progressively, we have not only added to the basket of problems that we had, we have, in fact, taken nothing out also, right? And the statesmanship that is required to, 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 to look at this and to actually convert the dream into a reality was there in bits and pieces and has been completely missing. In fact, what we see is an urgency to allow discord, antagonism uh, to hold sway and to act as if you can you can change the geography of subcontinent. Act as if one country which you feel hostile towards will not exist, etc. So I don't want to go deeper into it, but just let me say that, uh, and let's not act, this is a South Asia problem. It's an India-Pakistan problem. Okay, I think about time, let's get real. I've had too many of these conversations to sit through them, pretending that we can sneak our way through, you know, uh, through different, through the climate side and through this side and through track two and track 1.5, etc. Everything's been tried. What you need is intent, and that intent has to be played out every day through your policy. Shishi, the minister talks about the lack of statesmanship. So when you look as someone looking from outside government at what she calls an India-Pakistan problem, where do you see the absence of statesmanship? Yeah, you know, people speak what they are. So there is a lack of statesmanship, I see that coming from that side. Why India has no problem with all other neighbors? We have such a good uh, connection with Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, all the countries are coming together. And India is very much willing to be part of Pakistan's, uh, uh, you know, growth. And we are so interdependent, you know. When the onion is needed, it comes from Pakistan. And we need something, uh, we, we need agriculture, uh, you know, product produced from Pakistan, we welcome. And people to people connection, I tell you, even today, there is very good synergy. I see from outside the government uh, arena, there is so much uh, willingness, because we speak the same language, cultures are very similar, and we are connected in music, uh, Bollywood and uh, songs. So uh, I feel this division is artificial in some way that there is natural connectivity. The food is safe. You go to Karachi and Karachi Halwa, you can find it in other places too, and they also eat naan and paneer. And when there is a natural uh, affiliate, affinity between affinity. Uh, both the cultures, we need to now move forward, leaving the past behind, go ahead and think about how we can fight with poverty in both the countries. I think that is the way forward. Mr. And I feel it is possible. You spoke of the absence of statesmanship. The Indian Prime Minister displayed statesmanship when he landed in Pakistan to meet former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. A week after that, there was a major terror attack in India, which disrupted whatever efforts were made to try and get uh, India-Pakistan dialogue going. So when you talk about absence of statesmanship, where do you see the problem? Because at least from the perspective of the current government in Delhi, mm -hmm. the Prime Minister did try. And India suffered a terror attack soon after. Okay, listen, I think it is very telling that uh, even non-state people uh, coming from uh, the other side of the border would have a very state perspective on things, as is demonstrated, uh, right? And uh, what is, look, you can say this and I can say we have evidence that the Lahore terror attack uh, has Indian states' hands all over it, which we just found out, have shared with everyone. This will continue to go. We can tell you about Yadav, found in Balochistan, trying to instigate movement against Pakistan, killing people, right? And then you will go and ban the terrorism you know, drum all over uh, the place because it suits the state, right? Uh, eventually, look, statesmanship requires, there was, uh, Guruji has just said that India wants to, uh, has cooperation with everyone. Do you remember the Binstech project? Tell me where it is now, right? You can't deny geography. Why has Sark not taken off? So there will be always efforts to try and deny geography. You, it will perhaps not take off. I continue to feel that at the same time, when in the two countries you have statesmen, at the same time, willing to build a legacy of peace and think beyond their election cycle, this can and will happen, okay? But I am a realist enough to see that Indian fighter jets were entered Pakistani territory because an election had to be won, okay? I'm realist enough to see that after that, when cameras, international cameras were sent over there, they found nothing but trees, where terrorist camps were supposed to be. So we can either choose to continue 
the same narrative of hostility and yes, we want peace. Of course, we have affinity. Of course, we have affiliation. Of course, we have tens and thousands of years of you know, common language culture. All of that has always been true. And what have we done in the last 70 years? Right? What I'm saying is I'm not seeing a partner currently in the Prime Minister of India to take this project forward. What I'm saying is I did see a partner in Manmohan Singh to take this forward. What I'm saying is I did see a partner in Prime Minister Bajpayee to take this forward. Those are the realities. I can't deny realities. Prime Minister Modi may be very good for his country, maybe very good for, his, for dividing the country into Hindus and anyone else. He might have done well for India. And on many other counts, he might have done well. India is doing very well on many other counts. This is a count. To me, India is not doing very well. Krishna, you like, permit like, me to go to Shishi because he hand, has his hand up. That's a very serious charge correct. because this is in response to a terror attack where India and Pakistan almost came to war and she's alleging uh, that this is in the hope of winning an election cycle. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, the world knows. The entire world knows where terrorism is sprouting. Where was Osama bin Laden? Where was all these other terrorists which have been causing problem in the world? Let's not deny this fact. When you want to shake hands, you must also see that a terrorist is not promoted in some country. You see, that is our issue. Our India is all willing. Our Prime Minister is, you know, in the very first uh, moment of his uh, oath-taking ceremony, he invited uh, Nawab Sharif ji from Pakistan to be part of his oath-taking. I mean, he has all willingness and he has exhibited not once, many times, he has uh, stretched his hand first whenever Pakistan was in floods and other uh, earthquake and flood problem. It was Prime Minister Narendra Modi immediately jumped and said, we are here to help you. Let's leave behind all the past and we are here to fight only against poverty, not fight against each other. This, he has said it not once, but many times. So uh, these uh, you know, allegations that the current prime minister is not willing to cooperate uh, doesn't make any sense. When he has stretched his hands to uh, Bangladesh, he has given some lands to Bangladesh and made such great um, MOUs were signed with Bangladesh, developmental uh, programs were done with Sri Lanka, with Nepal. I mean, India is all willing. I mean, it plays the role of a big brother. And as a big brother, you know, they don't go into smaller things. They want the entire South Asia to prosper. This is the dream. I know uh, Prime Minister has a dream to make this entire Southeast Asia. SARC summits are formed for this and many projects have been put on that. So you cannot say that Prime Minister would have done, this is not doing. I mean, this Prime Minister has really, really changed the whole scenario. I agree. Not just in the world, uh, in India, but in the whole world. I agree, completely. Krishna Prime Minister has changed the scenario for the region. Uh, when you see the absence of progress on regional cooperation, I, whenever I've covered a SARC summit, I find people in Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, feel very upset about this India-Pakistan wrangling. Is that what holds uh, South Asian cooperation back? The minister said, but what about Beamstack? How much progress has Beamstack really made? Is there a way around our differences? You know, I think um, yeah, it is disappointing from a business person's point of view that SARC hasn't really got traction the way some of the other regional uh, economic corporations have, have done. Um, again, I don't want to get into the politics of this, but what we've seen is, uh, you know, in Sri Lanka, when the need arises, we have had the support of all the regional countries. And a good example is uh, what happened uh, uh, this year, or last year, with the economic crisis in the country. We had support from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, and in particular from India, which is the biggest economy in the region. And uh, I think um, I mean, multiple ways of, of support when, when the country really needed it. So, uh, and you know, at a time when, if you look at the past, there was a feeling in the country that there wasn't enough support from the region, but when the country really needed it, it came in a big way from India in particular uh, throughout uh, this economic crisis in uh, 2022. Um, so you know, I think there are ways around. I can't think of any particular ways, but we've seen some very good examples of how the region has got together to help a neighbor. Minister, India helped out Sri Lanka when the debt trap in Sri Lanka, caused partly by uh, China's influence, uh, required intervention from the neighborhood. Pakistan currently, economically, on a precipice. Uh, if the government of India the Prime Minister, who you were just criticizing, were to offer help uh, to aid Pakistan through its economic crisis, would your government accept it now? No, listen, uh, let's not be working in euphemisms and making narrative shaping, whether it's from the media or Guruji, who does art of living. We all have the same, try and put each other down. That's the motto, right? <laughs> I'm done with it. <laughs> okay, because first of all, Pakistan did not have an earthquake when Prime Minister Modi has been in power. Pakistan had floods, and I do not remember Prime Minister Modi saying anything. I, in fact, remember a very snide remark from a spokesperson of the Indian Foreign Office saying, oh, we have not thought of offering help yet. And I thought that's a very demeaning thing to say to a neighbor where 33 million people have been affected by floods. Thank you very much. I think Pakistan would certainly require, uh, you know, much from the world in terms of it's a, not only its ability, but the world offers everyone to be able to coalesce whatever we have together to, uh, towards regional, to, towards trade, investment, and everything else. But I, I don't think it'll be fair to say, oh, we're looking towards India to offer help, and will Pakistan take it or not? Because to be honest, let's not, uh, you know, let's not try and uh, not see facts for what they are, right? I think uh, what has happened in Kashmir is not something that you can unilaterally do away with, right? There's a record of the prime minister. We do not often like to talk about it, but the fact is that India has decided again and again, on this particular front only, I'm saying this is quite exclusive, because to the rest of the world, to the rest of the world, India has reached out in a very big way, right? But it, uh, I think Prime Minister Modi, in my assessment, and you know, Guruji might completely disagree, that's perfectly fine, but Prime Minister Modi has tarnished India's secular credentials, which took India to a very, very big place. And it was a country that we looked up to in that, in that particular uh,
place. Um, it's democratic, it's institutional structure. Um, as far as this, the current moves in uh, Kashmir were concerned, I believe it is against the sanctity of the UNSC resolutions for sure, against the commitments that were given in Simla Court. And anyone who wants to go beyond narratives can look into granular details and sit down with me and I can explain everything in fine. But if you want to just flash sort of talking points, we can do it till midnight. And Shishi, the vote. charge that somehow India's secular fabric is being torn asunder by the current government. Uh, sitting here at Davos, how do, you, how do you respond? Because you're seeing what's happening in the country uh, at this moment. How do you respond to the charge? Absolutely not. The women, Muslim women in India are, you know, they, they are freed from the triple talaq thing and they are so happy. So there are many developmental programs for minorities that, uh, for, for minorities in India. It has tripled in the last couple of years. The benefits for minorities are tripled. And it's, 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 uh, it's completely <laughs> irrational to say from a government where their minorities are in uh, great trouble. The minorities on Pakistan have, don't have the same rights as the minorities in India. How can someone say even that minorities are suffering in India. Minister Khat, two things. Shushi mentioned the issue Listen, of terrorism. Listen, Rahul, I've done too much of this to want to go into a tit for tat. I really, I, let's have a discussion which is a bit more informed. I That's really right. I, 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 and we know about Rana Ayub's houses being demolished. We know about Arundhati Roy and what she said about the polity in uh, India. <laughs> India might be doing many things right. I really would not, I don't think I would want to, <laughs> let's talk about perhaps something in which, you know, we don't, I'm not going for a tit for tat competition with uh, Guruji over here, I'm sorry. Yeah, obviously, we don't want to do, get into it. But then, since you started, I have to conclude somewhere. Let's all work together and see how People, sabka saath, sabka vikas. This was the slogan given by Mo, our Prime Minister Modi. Let's all together work and uplift the whole population. Whenever our Prime Minister spoke, he spoke about 138 million people. So he never said only 100 million people or 70 million people of this sect or that sect. He always included everyone. So sabka saath, sabka vikas is the slogan. I think that not just limits to India. It should it uh, spans across the entire globe. This year, we are having G20 meetings in which we have our main theme is Vasudaiva Kutumukum. We are one world family. Now, let's put behind all blame games. Let's come together and see how our youth can be skilled better. See, South Asia has a lot of potential. The youth are very resilient. But what is lacking with us is skilling. Our youths are not skilled enough. So, skill training, if we cannot jointly do it with all the countries of South Af Southeast Asia, we can excel in the world. You know, whether it is field of science, art, industry, and commerce. I think we have a lot to offer as a group. For example, Bangladesh, you know, they are very good in garment manufacturing and they are almost controlling many parts of the uh, industries there. So, so we can make, bring a difference in economy. If we move away from our, this old same tape of, uh, uh, you know, Tutu Meme in, in Hindi we said, you know, like. Uh, no, but you mentioned Bangladesh, and Bangladesh is a good issue because, uh, good example, because if religion was the issue, then India wouldn't be able to build bridges with Bangladesh in the manner that have happened in the last few years. Not only Bangladesh, Maldives, now, Maldives. It's a Muslim country. And so it's not the religion. We have to go surpass the religious uh, uh, identity, but we have to see the entire continent as a big potential for economic growth. I think you're questioning a little bit our, all of our intelligence, Rahul. When you